Good morning. I managed to escape the Western Fjords now. Um, really stunning place. Really nice, but it is very tiring. Um, really takes it out of you. There's a lot of driving um, around them. If you're going to visit them and you're going in from the north and you're going to go all around the coast, uh, if you want to do it properly, really expect to spend a, a few days at least um, up there. Uh, I did a lot of driving, probably about a thousand kilometres. Um, all the way kind of around the edge and um, back so it's very tiring it takes almost the same time to do that to be honest as to do the whole um, kind of ring road um, cool place though epic scenery um, got a few nice images there the weather was a bit hit and miss but um, yeah I'm glad I went really glad I went to see those puffins yesterday I'm still kind of buzzing about that really so I've got um, a few things I might go and look at it, it the weather's really bad it's raining a lot um, I'm quite close to Snellfell um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, peninsula where Kirch fell is, and there's a few things I might go and have a look at. There. There's an old fishing village, um, an old harbour, and um, I might get around to Kirch fell again if the weather clears up. It'd be a shame if it doesn't because there's not much wind today, and I'm hoping I can get some reflections of um, the mountain there. Um, there's also a spring water tap which uh, I want to. Um, taste some of the water from. I've looked on uh, TripAdvisor and there's a good comment on there that says um, exactly how you'd expect it to taste. Rusty, dirty water that tastes like flat beer. So um, yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah, it's my last full day here today. Really, I've got all day tomorrow, but my flight's kind of in, in the early hours um, uh, tomorrow afternoon, if that makes sense. So Tuesday morning my flight is. But um, I've kind of got tomorrow, I've got to clean the car and um, do a few kind of household things. Um, not household, but get a few things sorted before the flight really and get the car back to the hire company and stuff like that. So I'll, um, yeah, I'll catch up with you a bit later. <laughs> It's been one of those days, really. Um, this guy's going to pop right in my shot. Um, hopefully, he'll move any minute. Here he goes. It's a good, good man or woman. Um, right. It's been one of those days. Really. It's been raining all day. It's really depressing. I've just been kind of sat in the car um, all day without kind of um, doing anything useful. Uh, I've watched a few programs on the phone, um, quite into black sails at the moment, so i uh, watched a few of those. I've come to um, the Snellsfell Peninsula again, and um, I've come up to this place called Um I think that's how you pronounce it, I'll put it up. And I've come to take a picture of this modern kind of Art deco style church. I'm not going to get out the van because it's raining. I don't want to get wet. Um, so I'm going to uh, take the shot from inside the car. Now, what self respecting photographer would take a shot inside a car? But today I'm going to do it. Um, so, first things first is to get your composition set up. So, it's quite easy. You just start the car and you roll forward. I want to be shooting with this thing dead on in this composition probably around about there. In fact, they built the uh, car park lines right in the middle, so you can literally line up the, that line with the door, and then you know you're kind of bang on your composition already. So it's nice, easy already. Don't want to open the window just yet because we're going to get wet, and we don't want that to happen. Um, probably no need for a tripod either. You've got the nice solid door here. You can rest your camera on, uh, so things just get easier and easier. Um, the other thing is when we open the windows, we only want to open this window. Um, we don't want to be opening the other windows because it's going to cause a wind tunnel inside and everything's going to get wet and damp. So um, yeah, that's as simple as that really. I'll get the camera out of the bag 
get it on its tripod here and uh, we'll see what shot we can get. Might be to get a moody image, might be to get a long exposure. There's a bit of detail in the cloud. Let's see how we get on. <laughs> That's as easy as that. So we got three shots. Check their shot. That's how you do photography from a car without having to move. So, get a few more shots of it. I'll drive around a bit more, get the car set up a few more spots, and um, I'll catch up with you in a minute and fire the images up. Right, I've got a different composition set up now. Um, I've come down this private road which looks like it's in someone's kind of driveway, so I can't be long. Um, we've got another problem now, it's starting to mist up. Luckily we can open that window to get rid of that, so a bit of a different angle. Um, going to be using more of a telephoto type um, image now, so zooming into it more, not kind of wide angle anymore at all. Um, so it's much going to be much of the same really. Um, not going to be able to get a long exposure on it, so just another simple shot. Try and get the uh, lens cap on. Oh, it's so misty now, I can't set it up kind of through the window. I can't do the uh, HR and focus, it's just going to focus on the window, so I can't do that. I've had to open the window first. I'm going to focus through the uh, viewfinder first zoom in with full zoom there all I'm going to do is put it onto the thingy the live view and set up the HDR there we go I'm going to up it to no in fact I won't I'm going to use the door again take this shot that is how you shoot a building all through the comfort of your car. Um, what I'm probably going to do now is maybe going to have a look at the harbour down here. I think it's quite a picturesque harbour and um, if I can find my lens cap, there it is. And um, probably going to have a look at that spring on the way back. I've also got Kirchhoffel to go past um, and that's all going to depend on um, what the reflections are like there. So luckily today We've got not much wind, so it might work, but we've got that rain which is going to put ripples on the water and stuff like that. Hopefully over by Coachfell there's no wind, um, sorry, no rain. Uh, it's quite snowy. I met some lads this morning um, who actually were helping me get the car unstuck. That's what, another thing I was going to say. The land here is so wet, you're not allowed to go off-road in the cars at all anyway. It's against the law, you'll get fined. Um, but I was actually on a gravel pull-in bit. There's another vehicle there, another camper van type thing there. And um, I was literally just parked on the gravel, although I was towards the end of the, the gravel bit. Uh, I was there for about half an hour, went to get out, and the van, or the car, I can't call it the van, the car was um, literally sunk right in. It kind of, with the weight of it, at the time I'd been there half an hour, it kind of just sunk into the gravel, um, through the gravel and into the mud underneath. It would not get out. I had to dig it out with my hands, get all the kind of stuff away from it so it had a bit of a, a, a slope to get up and then I'd three lads um three German lads um kind of on a 10-day holiday over here and pushed me out so thank you very much to them I don't know your names but you know you know, might be watching one day got nothing else to do um so yeah bit of a nightmare I got stuck but I'm free now so I'm gonna um gonna have a look at the harbour and head over Kirchfell and probably get to that spring fountain a bit later just to try some of the local water and uh, I'll catch up with you um, probably at Kirchhoffel and uh, if I get any decent images down at the harbour I'll put them up as well.
um, this um, battery's going to last. My phone's playing up. Um, the cold doesn't like it. Doesn't like the cold. It was at 30%. It suddenly dropped to one. Um, found this shot that, like I say, looks down this valley. The only thing I don't like about it is I'm shooting just kind of in the water by this start of this waterfall, and um, I push the right button on the gimbal. And um, the thing I don't like about it is I'm because it's quite dark now. It's doing long exposures, but because the water um, here, because I'm shooting on a wide angle. The water here is so much closer to the lens that when I do long exposures, that water is really, really blurring out and looking like I've done like a 20 second exposure on it. Whereas the water down the valley, um, as it gets further away from the lens, there's less blur in it. There's kind of less movement because it's not so close to the, um, the lens. So what I've done is I've, I've focus stacked it. So I've got it down to an ISO uh, f-stop of f9, which is well too low. I wouldn't normally be down that low. But what I've done is I've focused on the foreground and I've shot that at an ISO of 800. And that's given me a shutter speed for that first shot of about an eighth of a second, which has just given me a tiny bit of blur in the water, a nice bit of movement. And now I've taken a shot of it focused in the foreground, uh, an, or the midground, sorry, an ISO of 400. And I've taken a shot of uh, bang on Kirchhoffel's peak, an ISO of 200. It's going to work slightly as a HDR as well because as I've focused into the last bit, um, the top of um, Kirchfell, um, the exposure on the camera's changed because I'm not shooting in manual, I'm shooting in aperture priority. And what it's done is it exposed the sky a bit more. So the actual shot is a slightly darker shot on the last one, which I think is going to work well. It's going to mean that when I stitch it, um, it's going to make the sky appear a bit better. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll work out quite nicely. I'm shooting about two stops underexposed as well on each image because there's a lot of brightness in the water um, and I want this to be a moody scene looking down the valley with lots of kind of mood and darkness looking up to the, the peak. So I'm purposely shooting it quite dark anyway. Um, I can always adjust it in post quite a bit. Um, yeah, so that's the shot. I'm shooting on the 16 to 35 mil lens. I'm shooting around about 20 mil. 16 is a bit too wide with six and I'm getting some of this um, bank in here, which I think does actually look quite nice in the image as a frame. It does frame it quite nicely, but I think it's just a bit of a boring frame. It's, um, it's just kind of wet squash grass that people have been standing on. If it was flowers there, it would be absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of shot really. I'm shooting with a polarizer on it as well, um, which is gonna make a massive difference. What it's gonna do is it's gonna darken the water in between these highlights just allowing us to get the kind of bright highlights from that scene. So I'm going to spend some time exploring around here, um, see what other shots I can get. I'm not going to get to the spring um, today, even though I've said about three times I will. Um, that'll be tomorrow, kind of on the way back down to Retrovic. What, but what I will do is I will hang around the area. Sunset's about half an hour away. I'll see if I can get any other compositions for that. Um, I won't continue vlogging any longer because I know this phone's going to get go flat. If there's any life in it, I'll try and get some um, kind of sweeping shots of what I'm shooting so you can see. And I'll put the images up from it and I'll catch up with you um, on the next vlog, which will be kind of my last day in Iceland, really. Um, see what we can find, see what I can shoot. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up, um, kind of like and a comment and all that kind of usual stuff. If you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate a subscribe if you've um, enjoyed the, um, the content. And I'll catch up with you on the next one.